Hey folks, Jesse Randall, director of the MSU Forestry Innovation Center outside of Escanaba, Michigan. Wanted to bring you or, or continue the updates on our food plots. What you're looking at here is, is a food plot of uh, dwarf Essex rape. Uh, this is one of those, what I would call a sacrificial or a mid-summer food plot. Uh, we put this in right at the end of July when we saw some rain coming or we hoped there was going to be rain coming. We got a few showers on it, but then we went into a very dry period. But you can see that this food plot, for the most part, it filled in nicely. Yes, there are some weeds, but that's all right. Um, what you're looking at is, is a forage that is meant for the deer to eat in the summertime. It draws them in here. You can see all of these guys have, have been browsed off uh, right at, at about eight inches in height. And they're not really going to set a bulb. This is just green forage uh, for those deer and wildlife to feed in. We see the turkeys out here. We see um, the pheasants come work in this open area. We have deer in here almost every evening and every morning because of the nutrition. Now you will see the impact of the drought out here. When you look across, you begin to see the yellowing of the leaves, the stunting growth as our soils change. When we come up onto a rocky hilltop, uh, it is drier and the plants haven't done as well. But the deer are also hitting these things every night. And so we don't expect this plot to last uh, into, into the October months because once this freezes, the deer will be in here and eat it right to the ground. And, and that's okay. We'll begin the process of prepping this area for next year once it goes uh, dormant and the deer have eaten it down to the ground, which I fully expect them to do, and that's okay. Um, this is just a great way for you to add rotation uh, to your food plots and give the deer some really highly nutritious forage. Now, out here at this station, we are blessed with, we, we have some agronomic crop renters. This really takes the pressure off of some of their maturing crops. The deer feed in here rather than their, their crops. So we're kind of using it to bait the deer away from those crops to lessen our crop damage uh, that we have. Anytime that you try to mix growing um, food plots for, for wildlife, you have that incidental issue of your neighbors or, or your, your cash renters having some, some increased crop damage. And so we're just trying to, to, to pull those deer away with this plot. It's done well. Um, you know, we, we work a lot with uh, Ray's Feed Mill over in Bark River. They, they really help us out on, on our seed and on our fertilizer. Now I can tell you this has not been fertilized. This is just kind of a poor man's version. We spread that seed with the, uh, with the four-wheeler and we cultipack it in with our old cultipacker and we walk away. Uh, this is something that I think everybody can do as long as they understand it isn't going to last into the hunting seasons. This is just for midsummer deer uh, growth and, and the turkeys have used this a lot. They come through here and they, they pick a lot of insects. So uh, please consider this as, a, as an option to your food plot rotation. Thanks for watching us here at the uh, Forestry Innovation Center. Please like and follow, and most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Uper Forestry, and our Facebook channel, and our Twitter feed. That's how we're gonna start really getting information out about how and when we're gonna plan our field days, both throughout the fall, into the winter, and then next summer as the pandemic lightens. So we'll see you online. If you have questions, please put them in the comment section and we'll be sure to address them in upcoming segments.